Stauffer Flint currently has two entrance doors on both sides of the building. That is set to change with the addition of what Dean Brill calls the front door project. The hope is to add a front door to the building that looks out onto Jayhawk Boulevard. One of the things that Donna worries about the most is the ice. It makes it difficult for the buses to run, especially going up and down the hills. If they can't run, it's usually indicated that classes will not be in session that day. I'm standing in front of the KU Endowment Building, where the scholarship money comes from. Only a certain amount is taken from a small pool of donor dollars, which has remained consistent since 2012. Holting says one of the things that the KU Parking and Transit Commission is working on is allowing GTAs to park in staff lots. This will free up more lots such as this one for more students. Silas and Maddie say they have experienced a big drop in business, but it's one they anticipated. Ice cream sales always fall when the snow falls. General Manager Caitlin Ellis says the 22-year-old Lawrence Staples, Silas and Maddie's, loses about 50% of foot traffic in the winter months. She says the shop does several things to cut costs in the winter. Ice cream buckets normally cram freezer shelves during the other three seasons. In the winter, you can find empty space. Do we make less ice cream, less cones. We go through less of pretty much everything. Other frozen dessert stores also feel the effects of the cold weather. Dairy Cream, Freezing Lou, Orange Leaf, and Cold Storm Creamery all say they experience a decline in selling frozen treats in the winter. The good news is people still buy ice cream despite the dreary weather. Some customers can't help but come in and enjoy some of Silas and Maddie's more than a hundred different flavors. And we do have a lot of regulars who come in pretty often. The other good thing is that we're on a strip with a lot of retail, so a lot of people will just be walking by and just stop in. The weather may be uncertain. What is certain is ice cream stores will still be serving their tasty treats regardless of the season. Mm. Sorry guys. Um, don't mind me, I'm one of those people that believes that ice cream goes for any season and I just had to have a root beer float after that. So don't mind me, but live in the newsroom, Harold Johnson, KJ's News. Creating the next generation in any given field is a teacher's dream. KUJH reporter Harold Johnson tells us how KU's Research Excellence Initiative helps one KU science professor do just that. Most would think a professor who just received a grant of money would be most excited to continue her research. But for Dr. Lena Heilman, the money she's received will do more than fund her interests. I want to train the next generation of scientists. And so this additional money helps me to support undergraduate students, graduate students, um, and even postdoctoral researchers, people who've received a PhD and are, are gaining more research experience. Dr. Heilman is a professor of ecology, but... I don't just study plants. Her research actually deals with plant genetics. Well, we focus on flowering plants, and the flower itself is a really interesting complex structure to try and understand the genes and genetic pathways that allow for complexity. This kind of research is not cheap. Dr. Heilman's studies require a constant stream of money. That is where the Research Excellence Initiative comes in. The Research Excellence Initiative, or REI for short, is a KU program that invests in faculty research. This year, the REI provided a total of $580,000 to KU researchers through its two awards, the Competitive Awards and the Accelerator Awards. In Lawrence, Harold Johnson, KUJH News. The bulk of Dr. Heilman's money comes from the Accelerator Awards funded by a donor specifically interested in her studies. Heilman says this money will go a long way in moving her research forward. Databases help KU maintain its status as a Research One university, but as KUJH reporter Harold Johnson tells us, a paper flat budget threatens all of that. Databases can help students and researchers achieve their goals. They cover topics ranging from African studies to women, gender, and sexuality studies. They come in large number, but in 2018, KU did not renew 184 databases and journals, and KU loses more each year. Our, uh collections budget, the money that we have available for materials, whether they're print materials or digital, um, has remained flat for the past 10 years. So that's been a significant problem because of inflation, we lose about a half a million dollars of buying power every year. Rising subscription costs have made some databases unsustainable. Smith worries that losing so many databases will lower KU status as a research university. Smith also says he has another concern. Smith says he's worried that the library spends so much money on databases that we have limited resources for actual books. He says certain departments tend to use books more than the databases. Smith says the libraries have some alternatives that they can explore. One is to purchase databases individually, another is to look into open access. Open access works in a lot of different ways. 
What it means is that the products of research, usually journal articles, are available to anybody who has an internet connection without um, charge. KU will continue to explore alternative options and negotiate subscription prices. In Lawrence, Harold Johnson, KUJ's News. The angry white male studies class caused quite a stir when it appeared on the KU class schedule for the 2019-2020 school year. KUJH reporter Harold Johnson is live in the newsroom. Harold, how did this class even get added to the curriculum? Well, Becky, as you could imagine, adding any class to KU's curriculum is a process. But the process for adding classes to the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences isn't as tedious as you might think. The Angry White Male Studies class is a new gender studies course swimming in a sea of controversy. The course description states, The class will chart the rise of the angry white male in America and Britain since the 50s and also evaluate the recent manifestations of male anger. Backlash came swiftly from various people, including Kansas Republican Congressman Ron Estes, who says, the course divides the student population and creates a hostile campus environment. Despite the backlash, the class piqued student interest, 30 available seats, every one of them taken. But before the class could even make its way to the university registrar, it started out as a proposal. Professors seeking to add classes to the KU College of Liberal Arts and Sciences curriculum must first submit a course proposal to the Curriculum Inventory Management System. The Committee on Undergraduate Studies and Advising reviews the proposals and sends them to the College Assembly. It has the power to approve the classes for the curriculum. I contacted the angry white male studies instructor, Dr. Christopher Forth, to gain insight on his class and this process. He responded that, all, that he's declining all requests for interviews both locally and internationally. I also contacted the undergraduate committee liaison, Dr. Holly Storkel, about the process. She didn't respond to my emails, phone call, or voicemail. I even reached out to the Office of Liberal Arts and Sciences intern dean, Dr. Clarence Lang. He was not available at the time, and his liaison instead directed me to the department's bylaws on adding classes. I asked about other possible times to meet, but I didn't receive a res response. Despite getting national attention, no one from KU has released an official statement or been willing to meet River reporters regarding the class. Live in the newsroom, Harold Johnson, KUJH News.